for a limited time only. Save the GST. Some exceptions apply. This is Now You Know. I'm Rob Snow. All the news you need to know. This is Now You Know with Rob Snow on News Radio. Late last night in the House of Commons. Mrs. Falk, Battleford's Lloyd Minster. Mrs. Falk, Battleford's Lloyd Minster. Mr. McLean. Mr. McLean. Mr. Weber. Mr. Weber. Mr. McGuire. Mr. McGuire. Mr. Reed. Mr. Reed. Mr. Shields. Mr. Shields. Mr. Mott. Mr. Mott. Mr. Williamson. Mr. Williamson. Mr. Arnold. Mr. Arnold. Mr. D'Entremont. Monsieur D'Entremont. Yeas full 176, 176, nays count 151, 150 there. Je déclare la motion. I declare the motion carried. It was almost midnight, but with that vote, 176 to 151, MPs approved a two-month GST holiday, something pitched by the Liberals a little more than a week ago. It passed with the support of the New Democrats. The Bloc Québécois voted against it, so did the Conservatives. None of this came as any surprise. The leader of the Conservative Party, Pierre Pauly have made it clear how he feels about this GST holiday, calling it nothing more than a two-month tax trick, and daring the Prime Minister to call an election when he squared off with Justin Trudeau during the day's question period. I think Canadians are ready to stand up and speak for themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If the Prime Minister wants to lecture us about democracy, then why don't we have a referendum? A referendum election where the choice will be the following. A tiny two-month tax trick with the NDP Liberals or a permanent axing of the carbon tax and axing the sales tax on new homes. Why not let Canadians decide now? The New Democrats are trying to take credit for the GST holiday. Mr. Singh was all over Twitter yesterday accusing Polyev of bootlicking for billionaires, apparently ignorant to the fact that the GST is a consumption tax that could benefit billionaires the most. Billionaires could now enjoy a GST cut on the finest wine, meals at the fanciest restaurants, cuts of the GST on designer baby clothes from the boutiques of Yorkville, but never mind. As for the $250 checks, the so-called workers' rebate, That wasn't part of last night's vote. That's all on hold for now. The Liberals scrapped that plan because the New Democrats and the Bloc both want the eligibility for those $250 checks to be expanded to other Canadians. The Bloc wants the money to go to pensioners, for example. The NDP wants the check to go to seniors, to people with disabilities, and other people who didn't work last year. We're letting them know right now. We're letting it be very clear. My expectation is... Let's pass the GST holiday right now separately and then fix the checks. And when I mean fix the checks, I want to see a fix that includes seniors, people living with disabilities, and those that weren't able to work. So it's back to the drawing board with those $250 checks. Stay tuned. Then there's the ad war and the political battle taking place on social media. Team Trudeau posted a video of the Prime Minister yesterday touting all the savings you're about to enjoy, thanks to him. Canadians need a break, so that's what we're going to do. Canadians are about to get a two-month tax break. The Trudeau government is giving back this holiday season in the form of a tax break. That includes temporary relief from the federal sales tax on selected items. We're getting rid of GST, HST on groceries for two months and on some everyday items that add up so quickly. Government doesn't set the price of things at the store, but we can give Canadians a break. That's what we're going to do. Meanwhile, the Conservatives were pushing out this attack ad. It accuses Jagmeet Singh of continuing to support Trudeau until Singh qualifies for his MP's pension. Jagmeet Singh is used to getting what he wants. He went to a high-priced American private school in Beverly Hills. Rolex watches... BMWs, Versace bag. But now he's got a problem. He needs to delay the election till next year when he qualifies for his $2 million pension. So he sold you out, signed on with Trudeau to raise taxes, crime, and housing costs. Sell out Singh. He gets his pension. 
You pay the price. So with the GST holiday, that's off to the Senate now, then royal assent, and then it will come into effect on December 14th. It applies to dozens of essentials like diapers, but also to other Christmas-related items that really aren't so essential, like Christmas trees, beer and popcorn, ice cream, cheese plates, and video game consoles. The GST holiday is set to expire February 15th and costs the Treasury $1.6 billion. There is no question Rob won't get answered. Now you know with Rob Snow continues on News Radio. Well, he's our expert in communications, crisis, communications, political communications, branding, and leadership. Barry McLaughlin is the president of TLC, Transformational Leadership Consultants. Barry lectures at the Telfer School of Management at the University of Ottawa and at the MBA program at the Shannon School of Business at Cape Breton University. Welcome back again. Great to hear from you. Great to be with you, Rob. So late last night, the House of Commons passed this two-month GST holiday, and immediately the Liberals and the NDP started likening Pierre Polyev to the Grinch who stole Christmas. Barry is a mean one, (laughs) Mr. Grinch. Do you think it will stick to Pierre Polyev? Well, it might last till Christmas, I guess. Um, it's going to fade pretty yeah. pretty quick, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I mean, it's a perfect one for them to try to do, right? You know, just pre-Christmas, this whole thing. Uh, they should do, a, you know, really a soapy commercial or something that shows, you know, the, the tears and then turning into laughter and love. But anyway, I don't think I have money for that. But no, I mean, I think it's, uh, you know, they've got to do something. Uh, they're taking this away from Canadians. Well, here's the thing. They haven't got it yet. They won't get it till 11 days before Christmas. And afterwards, well, they're all trying to pay for what they already spent at Christmas. So I'm not sure the timing was ideal for them. Um, and it also came, I think the major thing here is it came in the shadow of the biggest hit, potential hit on the Canadian economy in, in possibly a generation, uh, the threatened 25% tariff by, the United, by, by Trump. So that overshadows everything which gives, uh, you know, more strength to Polyev when he says, you know, we need to stop with these little uh, toys, whatever he's calling it, gimmicks and so on, and rather we need that to fight back and to make sure that we deal with this tariff, uh, this threatened tariff. So he's trying to turn it into, for his own benefit, and also, you know, I, I obviously he must believe this, that you can't be spending billions on that when we've got mega, mega billions hit, it's threatened to take place on January 20th from our in the president south of the border. So I think it's sort of, it's probably a, a saw off on this. I don't think there's a huge gain either way. Really? Okay. Okay. Yeah. He calls it a two month tax trick. So maybe yeah. uh, if I'm interpreting your remarks correctly, maybe this presents an opportunity for Mr. Polyev to maybe, I don't know, portray himself as the adult in the room. That's right. That, that's what I'm thinking. That's his opportunity here. Let's, you know, let's see how he yeah. executes that. But I right, do right, believe right. that that is the way to go on this. You know, it's not the individual, you know, 13 cents, you know, that's no longer being taken out of the pockets of Canadians for a couple of months. He's got to turn this into a bigger issue facing our economy. And, and we need to take that very seriously and begin the action now, not by frittering it away. I think this is the route he's going. Let's see how he executes that. Okay. Just on the, the um, Trump and, and tariffs, how did you think the... The government did in reacting to that news well they're being so low-key you know they are trying not to tip their hand too much and they don't want to turn into an immediate if you do that then we're going to tax you and then they could easily ex- escalate that this would not be the time to do that they're trying to keep it low-key pulling together all the premiers trying to sound united already you're seeing little you know leaks from Daniel Smith or, or, or Doug Ford, you're not quite mm-hmm. all fully on board, but I think he's got to show that basically Canada has the United Front. He's got to show the benefits of Canada. But nobody's really talking about this. I believe, you know, we know the border is a cover story, point number okay. one. It's okay. a cover story for what he's really doing. He believes in tariffs. He believes yes. it, it's all about America first. It's America right. first okay. in manufacturing, in trade, in in everything. And the only way he knows he can do a quick hit on that is to slap 25% tariffs on all imports. 
So that's what he's doing. He promised it a long time ago. Notice in this announcement, he didn't mention this. Here's why he can't mention it. If he mentions that, he's in violation of the USMCA. He's in violation of the trade agreement. You cannot slap tariffs. You're violating the agreement. And he signed that agreement. That was his thing. He waved that around. He signed it. So he can't mention. There's only one excuse you can use to put tariffs, and that if there's a health uh, or, or a uh, environmental uh, or public safety issue at stake. So he's turned Canada into this huge safety threat to America uh, because he's covering his tracks on what it's really all about. And hardly anybody's mentioning that. We're all running around, what can we do about the border? That's fine. Yeah, keep working on it. But that's not really what it's all about, okay? And for some reason, Very interesting. nobody's mentioning that. Right, okay. You know, you keep saying things that prompt me to ask you another question. <laughs> uh, Pierre Polyev has, is uh, throwing this term, Canada first. I'm Canada for I'm for Canada first. Huh? Uh, I asked some of our panelists this week, what do you think about that? Is that a winner for a lo- of a line from, from Polyev, Canada first? Or is it too Trumpy? For example, what do you think? Canada for, on Canada first. Well, it's a way to kind of show we're not going to roll over and play dead. Uh, it's a way to okay. show we're, we are going to push back. He hasn't said what that entails. He's not recommending we, we, we rip up, uh, I've not heard him, to rip up uh, Cosma, as we call it, north of the border. Uh, he, he is right. not uh, threatening that. Um, and if you do, boy, now you're into something else here. We're trying to play by the rules. You know, We're going to play by the rules. And uh, the one thing that uh, that uh, Justin Trudeau did succeed in those negotiations w- was the the whole issue of this mechanism for you know if there is a um, you know if there is a violation of it you can take it a- and have that uh, mit- litigated you can have that addressed so uh, he got that in there so now we're going to be lining up to get you know a review of all these illegal tariffs and they are illegal because. Uh, the the real motive has nothing to do with that. And by the way, Donald Trump has no has really very little discipline. Between now and January twentieth, he is going to open his mouth and he's going to say America first, and he's going to you know, wave the flag in advance about how we're going to turn this economy around. And he's going to mention those tariffs. Bingo! He broke into jail, as we call it. He's going to break into jail on that. Uh, he's got to sh- you know keep mm. he's got to keep the big lie going. It's all about the border. Yeah, right. So it might be that south of the border. It sure as hell isn't that north of the border. So um, it's very interesting that, that you know, we, we have this uh, review mechanism, and Trump signed it. So he's, again, signed something that's going to tie this whole thing up. And Canada is going gonna, is gonna to be due all that tariff revenue back. It might be retrospective. It might take years down the road. But we're going to get all that money back uh, because as long as we can prove that this had nothing to do with the one exclusion that's in the article, you know, the article in the agreement that allows it to happen. Uh, and that's this fake thing about, about the border. So uh, I don't mean border isn't a concern, but it's going to very quickly become a concern right. in reverse. So I'm just saying that, that, you know, this is one of these high stakes poker games. That's what this is. And Trump is really good at those really ex- exceptional at it. He's just starting earlier than we had thought, you know, Okay. Okay. All right. So look, when we come back, uh, we love to talk about branding and, you know, it's that time of year, Black Friday, Christmas on the way, lots of big brands uh, with brand new advertising, trying to get you into the store. Last week, we talked about uh, the terrible, terrible job uh, that Jaguar did try to rebrand itself. Um, This week, We'll talk about maybe the most famous brand in the world, Apple, with Barry McLaughlin when we come back. You have questions. Now you know with Rob Snow has the answers. On News Radio. Here with Barry McLaughlin, the president of TLC, Transformational Leadership Consultants, who advises many companies on how to make the most of their brand, how to maximize their brand, how to protect their brand. Last week, we talked about what a terrible job Jaguar, the the car company, did of trying to rebrand itself a real head scratcher. It kind of flopped for most people. This week, I want to talk about another famous brand, maybe the most famous brand in the world, and that is Apple. Always on any list, Barry, of the most admired brands in the world, right? Uh, The most respected brands, Apple. It is out with a new Christmas-themed ad for the AirPods Pro 2, so the, the headphones, the wireless headphones. I showed it to my wife this morning and uh, needless to say, she got a little choked up. 
Let me set the scene for you. It, it doesn't really work great on radio. I encourage people to see it. It's on social. It's all over social media. Uh, it ha- you have what looks like a, a a father. It's Christmas morning. He's drinking coffee, and his now teenage daughter is sitting on the couch across the room from him playing a guitar. And all of these memories come flooding back to him, but he's hard of hearing. And so the sound is very muffled until he puts the new AirPods Pro 2 into his ears and they feature a hearing aid feature. And then the same memories come flooding back and they're crystal clear. It's really quite, it's a quite an amazing ad. Uh, Play a little bit of it, David, please. John, listen. Light the fire. You place the flowers. Amazing. It's just amazing. Yeah, it's so well done. It's a great ad. Look, we only have about a minute and a half left here. Can I have your thoughts on that, please? Yeah. First of all, it does exactly what Apple historically has done. As Steve Jobs said when he's created, really co-created Apple with Steve Wozniak, he said, we're not just creating a new product. We're we're here to change the world. And it's a visionary uh, thing that he had. We had a chance to speak with Steve Wozniak when he came to Ottawa a few years ago. And, you know, really half the conversation was really about Steve Jobs. But that kind of vision. Secondly, emotion. Television and social media videos are heavily emotion-oriented. If they don't hook your heart, they're not getting your head. So that's that's a really huge point here. It is it also has the nostalgia piece to it. So boomers like me, I remember our house, Graham Nash. I remember Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Uh, and it was a very powerful song back then. And, of course, he's targeting Gen Xers in this as well. So he's got the little kids of the man who can't quite hear them. And then finally, when he plugs in the AirPod 2, it's like, wow, he can hear everything yeah. and not miss the childhood of his kids. It works on every level. I'm going to have to get one for Christmas, or Santa's going to get it for me. <laughs> I think it's a, beautiful, <laughs> it's a beautiful product, but so well done. It doesn't hit you over the head with so it. So well done. You're yeah. caught in. Yeah. You're caught up with it. No question. Yeah. I bet you they sell millions of them, Barry. Yeah, it's oh, quite yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Have a great weekend. You too, Rob. No question goes unasked or unanswered. Now you know with Rob Snow returns on News Radio. Well, he's been minding Ottawa's business all week long. Tom Korski is back with us. He's the managing editor at Blacklock's Reporter. Great to hear from you again. Well, thank you, Rob. March Madness. My goodness, what a story you have this week. Uh, th- this trick by Ottawa bureaucrats, I mean, it's as old as Confederation. What did they do, Tom, at Global Affairs with the money that they had remaining in the Global Affairs budget? What did they do on the last day of the fiscal year? Last day. The fiscal year ends at 11.59 p.m. on the 31st of March every year. And this is a phenomenon, not college basketball sweepstakes in the United States. March Madness is when federal departments and agencies are motivated to burn through any unspent funds in their budgets, because otherwise, at the stroke of midnight, the money reverts back to the Treasury. You would say, well, if you don't need it, what's the problem? No. It's easier to spend the money and pretend you need it than ask for more money later. And so, what did the Department do? Foreign Affairs, (laughs) this is gold, that day, March 31st, (laughs) Over half a million dollars in new furniture, office furniture, residential furniture, and fixtures. $523,400 worth of furniture that day. More than 70 furniture orders. In one day. Uh, they, they couldn't get them out fast enough, Rob. No. Oh, my goodness. 73 separate orders for office furniture. Residential furniture and fixtures. Wouldn't you love to see the fixtures? 523000 Four hundred and forty-six dollars. But again, this is not a new phenomenon, right, Tom? 
No, no one has stopped it. The only time it has ever been uh, restricted to a, a, a degree that did not inspire a gag reflex is when there were balanced <laughs> budgets. And, for instance, in the old days when uh, Paul Martin balanced his budget and did so by privatizing Canadian National Railways, collapsing the Department of Consumer and Corporate Affairs, cutting 45,000 public service jobs. That really put a damper on March Madness. But that's why when they say in this town deficit times are good times, this is what they mean. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you would think in the private sector, the the end of the fiscal comes and you haven't spent you know a half a million dollars. That would be a that would be a sign of efficiency. Hey, look, uh, we came in under budget. This is not how the the Canadian bureaucracy works. In the bureaucracy, it's like, oh my god, oh my god, we have a half a million dollars that we haven't spent. If we don't spend it, we might not have that half a million dollars next year. So we better spend it. So what do they do? They went on a furniture shopping spree. Absolutely. That's what they did. There is a chance of an investigation of this uh, phenomenon, March Madness, by the Commons Government Operations Committee. Taxpayers should hope it happens. There's a notice of motion before the committee. There's never really been an investigation of this phenomenon. And it's just to get these managers up here, these furniture lovers, to explain. Tell tell me about the the sudden need for a a new office equipment right around lunchtime. On the 31st of March. I can't wait to hear all about (laughs) that. I hope it happens. Yeah. Can you imagine if some of it goes to furnish the new condo for our emissary in New York City on the long billionaire's row? Wouldn't that be something? Hmm. Well, We'll see what happens. Something's got to match the $4,600 coffee maker, Rob. (laughs) I mean, you can't. You're not sitting on Ikea chairs, (laughs) right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, look, um, every now and then we speak with a, a friend of ours, a Métis contributor, uh, Cam Holmstrom, Nipa Way Strategies, Métis from uh, Kenora in northwestern Ontario, political political strategist and observer. We were talking with him about this program for Indigenous procurement, setting aside 5% of all government procurement for Indigenous-owned businesses. This is quite a scandal they have going on Parliament Hill, and uh, quite a racket. He says there's even a name for it. His words, not mine, uh, I would say. Rent a feather. Rent a feather. How pervasive are these phony claims of Indigenous identity in order to secure government contracts? What's been learned? That's a good description of it. There was testimony at uh, committee, Rob, by uh, witnesses, uh, once again, Commons Government Operations Committee, the MPs are trying to get a handle on the extent of this fraud. Their word, not mine, they call it fraud. These are people, as you mentioned, who claim to have contractors who claim to be Indigenous-owned. They are uh, not Indigenous. There is no certification of their claim to be First Nations, Métis, or Inuit. The, there was testimony that the payouts may be as much as three, two to $3 billion. You say, wait a minute, that's crazy talk. Not really. Federal contracting mm-hmm. annually, no. just the feds, is worth, by their estimate, about 25 to $35 billion a year. And the indigenous set-aside is supposed to be 5%. So if there is even anywhere close to 5%, you get into billions very quickly. It's infuriating. There was one witness almost in tears, uh, indigenous a woman who is testifying, uh, Rob, almost in tears, saying, really, you're just robbing from uh, First Nations people. This is just theft. It, you stole the land, and now you stole the money. These are little contractors, by the way. M- vast majority of yeah. indigenous businesses are small and medium-sized, typical small businesses. She says, you're just ripping us off one more time. Very upset. Okay. When we come back, we'll pick up on another angle of this. Uh What is going on with Randy Boissonneau, who, of course, had been claiming Indigenous identity and uh, because of those claims now finds him on the outside looking in on the cabinet. Uh, So we'll talk about that. Critical thinking is not dead. Now, you know, with Rob Snow returns on News Radio. Tom Korski back with us, managing editor at Blacklock's Reporter. Let's talk about Strong Eagle Man, Randy Boissonneau. What's the latest in the Boissonneau affair? 
incredible, really. Mr. Boss and his uh, company he co-founded, uh, Edmonton Medical Supply Firm, that it's in its heyday, this was only founded during the pandemic. It was making over $30 million a year in gross sales. It, it was really going gangbusters, and then it all went horribly awry. It, his company was just struck from the federal bidders list. But there are MPs on the Commons Ethics Committee who have been trying to talk to some of his former associates, in particular two who have been evasive in terms of answering their phones or responding to email. What did the Ethics Committee do? They issued a summons and they said, you are going to show up or else. If you do not show up, this is a, a committee order, has the weight of a court order. If you do not show up to testify, to answer questions about how it was going with Randy in the medical supply business, especially when he was a member of cabinet, you will be taken into custody by the sergeant at arms. People don't believe this, Rob. It happens rarely, but it has happened. It is no joke. If you are summoned by a parliamentary committee, you do not have a choice. And MPs are just steaming. They are so fed up with the Randy Boisson saga, but they want to get to the bottom of it. Okay, what's your sense of liberal MPs around the committee are they no love lost are they They're still in sub- no love lost okay not that's interesting interested whatsoever uh mp uh, fisher uh, from dartmouth uh nova scotia said uh, i'm not i have what did he say to the committee why don't i just quote him i have no interest in standing up for these folks quote end of quote mp wasano has vanished he's still technically a member of the liberal caucus even before he was dismissed from cabinet and his company came under police investigation. It's just one thing after another. It is, as, as one MP said, it's like a, uh, it's like a Netflix miniseries. The Randy Boisseno story. It's just <laughs> incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I would watch that. I really would. I'd, prob- I'd probably binge on the Randy Boisseno story. I have been binging on it already, so I may as well watch the dramatization of it. Oh, funny. Okay, there used to be in Canada, used to be, up until very recently, actually, what was known as the immigration consensus, that immigration was good for Canada, even vital for the Canadian economy. The Department of Immigration has been doing its own in-house research. How do Canadians feel about immigration? What did they find? Absolutely startling figures, uh, Rob. We, I've been reading these for 15 years, their annual tracking surveys. In-house research, as you mentioned, by the Department they watch this very carefully. They ask the questions. No one else, not immigration critics. The department that runs immigration asks the questions. What did they find out? Majority, 56%. Say that we're letting too many immigrants into this country. Asked, to what degree do you think that immigrants should make further steps to integrate into Canadian society? 63% agree. This is the most startling question of all, my opinion. Why don't I read it? Asked, to what extent do you agree or disagree with the following statement? Immigration is causing Canada to change in ways I don't like, end of quote. That used to get 15 to 18 percent response, and that was like, that was racist. 42 percent right. nationwide. Four out of wow. ten Canadians nationwide say immigration is changing this country in ways I don't like. Incredible returns, Rob. Yeah, and I mean, this isn't some, you know, $1,200 fly-by-night IVR poll that the, that they did here, um, interactive voice response poll. This this was a, you know, this is serious public opinion research that the department did. This is a $50,000 survey that they paid for. 2,300 people took part. So we'll probably Absolutely. count no, on findings being somewhat culture, accurate. Yeah, right? yeah leger marketing. Yeah. This, is yeah. the, this is federal research. But the the numbers are just absolutely startling. So it points to, as you point, as you mentioned, really a collapse. And and we, I think this, this is a collapse in that consensus you mentioned. And I don't know how they put the genie back in that bottle. They have now normalized resentment about immigration mm-hmm. for changing Canada in ways that we don't like. Quote end of quote. That's something. Okay, let's. Uh, I mean, let's talk about the Canada Post strike. I mean, we're. We're 25 days until Christmas Eve here, and Canada Post is on strike, and there does not appear to be uh, an end in sight. What is the Labour Minister saying about this? Uh, Brace for a long one. Next week, as you mentioned, Rob, is the busiest week of the year. 
for Canada Post and Christmas mailings. It always has been traditionally. Uh, the longest strike they had last time in 2018 was 35 days. We're now at, what is it, day 14. So, no uh, talks ongoing. Fe- federal mediator withdrawn after talks collapsed between Canada Post Corporation and the Canadian Union of Postal Workers. Labour Minister McKinnon saying, what did he say? He told reporters, it's possible we will have a prolonged labour conflict. Last time, Cabinet brought in back-to-work legislation. They hesitate to do so now because we are in a pre-election run-up, and there are 55,000 postal workers, and they and their spouses and their families and children all vote, and it's a very awkward time. Well, plus they're in the minority situation, and, um, you know, they they would have to count on one of the other parties, and I'm not sure if they would really have the, the support to pass back-to-work legislation right now although you know it's really it's really quite remarkable that the government you would think uh you know a postal strike 25 days before christmas the government this would be something the government would be would be seized with that they would be getting doing their very best moving heaven and earth to get these people into a room come to some kind of collective agreement if not maybe send it to binding arbitration maybe explore passing back to work legislation but they They don't seem interested, uh, at least not with any urgency to do that right now, Tom. Yeah, no, McKinnon, uh, plus with transport unions, he knew he couldn't couldn't get a bill passed to the House of Commons, so he pulled that sneaky you mentioned, just sent a cabinet order to the Canada Industrial Relations Mm -hmm. Board, that's the Federal Labor Board, force everyone into binding arbitration. The unions, this drives them crazy, because you are taking away your right to strike. But uh, that gets a little awkward, because now you're talking really about federal employees, and it's a real tight spot, but that's the spot they put themselves in. Okay. Well, great to hear from you this week, Tom. Thank you for minding Ottawa's business. I will say this. Um, I re-upped my subscription just today for Black Locks Reporter. I've been a subscriber for many years now. I believe this is my fourth or fifth year being a subscriber to Black Locks Reporter. I do so because I believe the work that you do there is vital. It is vital information for Canadians to understand how their government works. And I want to thank you and your team for everything that you do. And thanks for joining us every week, Tom. It's Great my to pleasure, hear from Rob. You. you know, this is the nicest conversation I've had all week. <laughs> it's really very <laughs> okay, pleasant. Thank that's you. Good. <laughs> all right. Excellent. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye. You bet. Manage, uh, managing editor, Black Locks reporter. That's Tom Korski. Now you know with Rob Snow continues on News Radio. Here with David Smith. The talk back is coming up right after the news. Friday free for all talk back. Always a lot of fun. Open line, open topic. If you're ever looking for a podcast of our show, now you know with Rob Snow, a great new mobile app. I'll be here our show when you want to at your leisure called the Seeker app. That is Seeker, spelled S E E K R. Isn't that clever? S-E-E-K-R. Has all kinds of exclusive audio you won't hear anywhere else. News, music, and sports. You can download it for iOS or Android. Seeker, spelled S-E-E-K-R. And now you know with Rob Snow is on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Well, we made it to Friday, Dave. Yes, we did. More or less in one piece. Yeah. Busy week in the news business. A lot going on. I might not be here on Monday, Dave. Oh, Just to let you know. Oh, okay. I'm feeling really good. You're feeling really, really good. Feeling bought my lot. Bought, yeah, yeah, bought my lottery tickets this morning. This is one of my few vices. Okay, football, and I play the Lotto Max. So the Lotto Max jackpot. It's not a hundred million dollars. I think earlier in the week I said, oh, it's going up to a hundred million dollars. It's actually eighty million, but the total prize pool is a hundred million. Yeah. So it's eighty million. Eighty million. I'm fine with 80 million. Hey, if I even have to split it with somebody, uh, I can live on 40 million. No problem. Plus uh, 20 prizes of a million dollars each. The max million prizes, they call them. Dave. So uh, the grand total, $100 million in uh, in the mix. So I bought three tickets. <laughs> it's amazing. That it's, like, it's called a tax on the stupid. Okay. And I become dumber the bigger the jackpot gets. Because I just buy more tickets. I don't know why I do that, but I, I I do that anyway. So, but I'm playing with house money because I won 
20 bucks on the law yeah, max was, on Tuesday. I was going so to I, say, I, you're just reinvesting your winnings now, so you're fine. That's right. That's right. I'm playing with house money. So um, if you don't hear from me on Monday, if I just suddenly disappear and my, you know, my Twitter handle disappears and I disappear from social media and I my phone number is changed, it's because I'm a gazillionaire yep. and I've won the lotto yep. max. That's fine. I'll, if I'll, I'm back on Monday, yeah. it's because I didn't even win a free ticket and, you know, and Listen, if you take off, keep on and that's fine. On. I'll I'll host the show as long as my checks in the mail. I will step in for you and host the show, and we'll all be fine. Okay, you'll be ready to go. That's good. I'm ready to go for talk back. How about you, Dave? Right after the news, let's get it going on a Friday. It's a day yeah. to have a good time. Got a lot of information about the GST holiday that we'd like to to pass along. That passed through the House of Commons late last night, almost midnight, but they they did pass it. Two months, you get a break on the GST on a whole host of items, some of them essential, some, well, not so essential, others just downright stupid. Let's talk about it, or whatever else is on your mind. Friday Free For All Talk Back Hour, after the latest breaking news on News Radio. It's time to talk back. On Now You Know with Rob Snow. Call now. And have your say. 1-833-668-2577. Welcome to Talk Back. Two hours of debate and discussion on the big issues of the day. And today it's the Friday Free For All. That's our favorite day of the week around here. We don't come up with the topics. We have been doing that all week. So today it's your turn. What do you want to talk about? We want to talk about something that's been in the news. We know a thing or two about the news. We've been following it all week. So let's jump into it. If there's something that you think should be in the news, feel free to raise it here, whatever it happens to be. Big, small, somewhere in between. We're usually good to roll with it. The call in line is 1-833-668-2577. one 668 2577 If you've never called before, just mention that to the call screener. We will... Make your call a priority. It has certainly been a busy week in the news business. We had Trump and tariffs. I mean, that was a huge news story this week. Huge, huge news story this week. We talked about it. If you want to weigh in on it, by all means, go ahead. Talked about a lot about gun control yesterday. I told you that's going to be a big news story in the in the days ahead. Watch that next week. In fact, long read today about the 35th anniversary of the Mass shooting at a Ecole Polytechnique in the National Post today. I encourage you to read that, and I would uh, predict more stories like that in the days ahead. We talked a lot. In fact, the most popular topic of the week was the $250 checks. I mean, by far, the phones are ringing off the hook about the $250 checks. The $250 checks are all on hold now. I hate to break that to you. I hope you didn't go out and spend it in advance. The plan to dole out the $250 check sometime next year, just before the, the carbon tax goes up, that's been halved off as part of this affordability package, this plan to send more than 18 million Canadians checks. Basically, anyone who worked last year would get a check as long as you didn't make more than $150,000. You could earn up to $150,000 in 2023 and get a $250 check from, from the government. But even that wasn't um, good enough. For the New Democrats or the Bloc Québécois who want the eligibility expanded to include people like pensioners, people with disabilities, people who didn't work last year. In other words, basically everyone should get a check. (laughs) It's kind of like an episode of Oprah. You get a check and you get a check and you too get a check. Uh, So anyway, I guess my prediction would be just on the checks. See what comes of it. But um, I think the liberals are going to cave They'll cave into either the bloc or the NDP because they they're in a minority government and they need the support of one of those parties in order to avoid an early election. So on the checks, I would say stay tuned. But if you want to talk about the checks again, we can talk about the checks again. That part of this whole affordability package that the liberals have been pitching, that was the most expensive part. The $250 checks, one time only, more than $4 billion, I believe $4.3 billion or so. So if they expand, obviously, the eligibility, expect the price tag for that to substantially increase. 
The other part of the package is what passed through the House of Commons last night. And I mean, like, it was late. It was almost midnight. And that's this two-month GST holiday. A two-month holiday from paying the GST on a whole host of items, some of them certainly you would consider to be essentials, like diapers, okay? A lot of others totally... Not essential, and many others downright silly, just in my own opinion. And uh, it just for people who say, oh, there's Rob, so he's just that right or center guy on the radio. And he just doesn't like it because the liberals are doing. That's not true, okay? I'm, for the most part, a critic, and I've been critical of the Ford government in Ontario, which plans to do the same thing. The Ford government's going to be sending out $200, to every voter ahead of the election. I was critical of Aaron O'Toole when he was the leader of the Conservative Party for pitching the same kind of thing, a GST break for the holidays. I was critical of Tim Houston in Nova Scotia for announcing a cut in the provincial sales tax just before the Nova Scotia election because you know why? He had three years to do it, (laughs) but waited until he could bribe the voters with it. And these are all, in my own opinion, they're just all shiny objects and gimmicks, as far as I'm concerned, that have... um, Very little to do with solving the very real problems that we have in Canada with things like the economy and the delivery of social services. It's a lot easier for the government to give people a few dollars of their own money back than it is, say, to fix a crumbling healthcare system. But uh, I digress. 1-833-668-2577. Every line is available. It's the Friday Free For All Talkback Hour. I'd love to know what you think about this GST holiday. I mean, when we talked about the $250 checks, you didn't sound very impressed. A lot of you called it a vote-buying scheme. I mean, do you feel the same way about this, the GST holiday? What do you honestly think about cutting the GST on booze during the holiday season, during the Christmas season? Cutting the GST on things like beer and wine and ready-made cocktails. Some people don't like that idea. Making it cheaper to drink booze. What about you? Some people think it will encourage more drinking, irresponsible drinking. Now, I'm the last guy who would start any modern-day temperance movement or anything, but uh, I would put it to you, does it bother you at all that the government is cutting taxes for a couple of months on booze? If you're in the retailing business, I mean, if you're a merchant, love to hear from you. What is this going to mean for you? Do you think this will get more people into the shop this GST holiday? Or are people just going to defer their purchases until the GST comes into effect? I mean, if I was buying, whatever, an Xbox or a PlayStation, why would I buy it now? When two weeks from now I can save the GST. What are you dealing with as a merchant to get ready for this? Tell me about what you have to do to prepare, you know, your cash registers, your point of sale systems. I understand it's quite an ordeal. What is involved there? Is it a complicated thing for you? Is it more hassle than it's worth? Share what you know. Give us the goods. Two-month break on the GST. On select items only. What do you think about this? There's also the Canada Post strike. We can talk about that again. No end in sight to that. They were meeting with a mediator. And the mediator, it sounds like that person just said, this is hopeless and I'm out of here. I mean, we're two weeks into this now, no end in sight, 25 days till Christmas Eve. Are Canadians really going to endure Christmas without Canada Post? No Canada Post at Christmas. No mailing Christmas cards. No letters to Santa. No packages in the mail. I mean, really? It's really hurting some small businesses. Others seem to be finding workarounds. Uh, I ordered a new pair of uh, snow pants. They arrived yesterday by Canpar. The guy delivered them right to the door. Canada Post never did that. I usually have to go to the Canada Post Depot around here and get my packages. Are you missing Canada Post or have you barely noticed that the company is on strike at all? Should the government step in and end the strike? Get those workers back on the job. The Christmas mail is piling up. What should happen here? It's a totally illegal strike. They have the right to strike. They've timed it pretty well. Gives them the most leverage to be on strike this time of year. Really puts pressure on the employer. Strike a good deal. What should happen here with Canada Post? Anything? Nothing? I think that's enough to get us rolling for now. It's the Friday free-for-all. I'm 77. I'm Rob Snow. 
This is News Radio. Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. 1 833 668 2577. It's Talk Back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. It's a Friday free for all. Talk Back Hour, open line, open topic on a Friday. Eric in Cole Harbor. Eric, hi there. Happy Friday. How are you, Rob? I'm good, Eric. What's on your mind? Good. Well, listen, you know what? Uh, you remember when the disco made its uh, ugly face there before rock and roll? They said death before disco. Well, before the next election, for me, it's death before Trudeau. Because okay. I, don't know where we, I don't know where we got this guy. Anyways, look, oh. I think you touched on a couple of good things. Okay. We have real problems. We got the people that are living in tents yes. uh, that really, really need help. Then yes. you have, like, uh, as you suggested, the healthcare system. Right. Right. So, yeah. you know, we have, uh, uh, you know, a whole plethora of things. The thing that comes to my mind, and I'm not going to get into big dissertation, but if we need to fight climate change. And one of the ways we need to fight uh, climate change is these atmospheric rivers, because we're in an integrational warming period, are warming up. We're going to have more and more deluges, is self evident throughout the world right now. And our infrastructure isn't there to be able to handle it. Right. So we get to adapt to the situation that we're in. If anybody thinks that a carbon tax is going to do anything for it, it uh, uh, it's just, uh, you know, it, it's just impoverishing everybody. And honestly, this 250 bucks and this GST thing, it's a Good. joke. It's, a joke. it's an absolute, yeah. it's an, it's an absolute joke. And everything you said in your monologue before the program started, I agree with you 150%. You're we very gotta smart spend man. Our money more wisely. And this last thing I will say, the healthcare system, Rob, in order to clean that up, we got to clean up the root causes. We have to clean up our nutrition. We have to clean up our diet. And we, ha- you know, there's just so much to it. I, I it take me the whole afternoon to show to talk yeah. about it. Well, we, we 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 also have to fix. What we really, I think, have to address is what they call primary care. I mean, we have to do something about people having access to a family doctor, a family doctor who can, you know, follow the patient throughout the majority of their life. I think that is, you know, that's got to be a key here. And now we're we're hitting a real demographic wall where so many doctors are retiring and. There are just no doctors to replace them. It yeah, could, it, you know, it could, and, it, it, and you know, you know about the, they call it the gray tsunami, right? We're getting yeah. older. We're getting older. We're getting sicker. Uh, our healthcare costs are only going to go higher. I mean, we could be on the precipice of something really, really bad here. Well, you know what, Elton Musk, you know, and Musk talked about that. We're going to in the Western world, in particular, we're going to destroy ourselves just by not having children. And uh, he says it's going to be the decline of civilization. You know what? He's almost right when you look at all the problems that you just uh, suggested there. All right. So anyways, Eric, good to hear you from know, you. I uh, got jam phone okay. lines today, so I'm going to keep it a little short. Thanks, though. Uh, in Cole Harbor, Nova Scotia, Calgary, Alberta is Peter. Hello, Peter. In cold <laughs> Alberta today, where it's chilly, chilly, chilly. Yeah, good morning. Uh, you know what? Let's talk about the lipstick on the pig. It's uh, You were right when you said it was a gimmick. The GST is an absolute farce. What's going to happen is the industry is going to spend millions taking the GST off of specific SKUs, and then they have yeah. to put it back two months later. Yeah. That, there's a cost that they're going to not going to burden. They're going to take that GST that they're removing. They're going to transfer it into profits for their company so they can pay for this gimmick. And then when the two months are over, they're not going to drop those prices by what they increase it. What they're going to do is they're going to keep going, and the government's going to tax even more on the GST and the HST or whatever on those products. That's what it is. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with, you know, how retailing works. I'm just wondering how complicated this is going to be for people with point-of-sale systems and what's involved with this. I mean, there are so many, so many items, so many exceptions to the items, and... Gosh, it's going to be a could be a complicated mess for a, a lot of retailers. I think. Well, this is why I say it's going to cost millions for industry, the, the retailers yeah. to go in and take specific SKUs. It, it wasn't across the board everything. It's going no. to be specific SKUs: pops, chips, diapers, some children's clothing, stuff like that. Now, I, Toys, I don't know if yeah. BC does it, but BC used to have. Uh, Tax free on all child good child clothing, but I don't know if they do that anymore or not. But but you know, so they're going to have to go and nitpick through this 
stack of items and say, okay, we can't charge GST for that, but we still have to charge it for this. That's going to cost man hours, time, millions across the industry, and they're going to recover it one way or another. And I'm going to tell you right now, they're going to just take transfer that that 5%, 12%, whatever it happens to be, over into the product price. You're not going to see a change in the prices on the market. And then okay. when two months is over, GST, everything gets re-implemented. It's going to cost you more in taxes on those products. And prices will be higher. Price. Yeah. Prices will be higher, which would be inflationary. Okay, thank you, Peter. Interesting Absolutely. way to look at it. Yep, one eight three three six six eight twenty five seventy seven. Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. One eight three three six six eight twenty five seventy seven. It's talk back on now. You know with Rob Snow. It's the Friday free for all in Cambridge, Ontario. Tom. Hi, right, Tom. What's on your mind today? Well, you know, you hit a couple of nerves, but I'd like to say first, like your last holiday, Costco and the large and the larger chains have already started way ahead of removing the GST off a lot of things. And I know that because I went and bought some st- stuff for some grandkids and that, and there was no taxes on it. It's just a matter of a okay. like, You know, there's, pe- there's people in there in these companies that cannot, can do this very easily. It's not going to be that difficult. What happened after afterwards, no one's going to know. For sure, we don't know. Uh, I want to talk about the postal strike because it's gone beyond being even, you know, <laughs> being supportive of them. Like, you know, I'm sorry, but a lot of people get laid off and do get your recalls when they get back to work in. So if, they're, if they feel their workers are being, again, treated unfairly, welcome to the real world. It doesn't, this is the way things happen when you're, right. when you go on strike and you have to lay people off because you, right. you know, there's no work going on. So what do you expect everybody to do to pay their wages? Not right. Not right at all. Well, they're so not getting paid on, anyway. They're on strike. I mean, right, they're, not, exactly. they're only getting but strike pay. You're, so. you're going to have to, you're laying some people off that, you know, right. there's nothing well, for them to do. What do you want? What are you supposed I know. To do? They, they laid a few hundred people off. There are 44,000 people on strike for crying out loud. You know? Yeah. You know, so, and then our government here, Mr. Ford and his infamous way is now thinking about buying back the highway that taxpayers built to begin with, buying it back again. Oh, um, the what highway is that again? 407, 407, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like this, here we go. So you made, uh, Mr. Harris made the mistake of selling it for $1.3 billion dollars. To cover some yeah. deficits. Now you're thinking about buying back the highway at in a real inflated price now. And where do you think this money is going to come from? So right, geez, right. It's just a revolving door. Have a great like day. I, you know, with, with with Premier Ford, I I you know I like some of the stuff he does. I think he, in the last week he's been pretty much on the money on on the threat of Trump and these tariffs and the devastation yeah. that it would cause with the Ontario economy. But I'll I'll tell you. He's been a real disappointment when it comes to any kind of fiscal conservatism because he's a bigger spender than the liberals said he replaced. Well, you're not going to you're not going to get a lot of argument from a lot of people in Ontario about that. Like, you know, his plat he didn't have a platform when he ran for election. Bucket beer only lasted for so long. Um, you know, uh, the things that he should be concerned about, he doesn't seem to be. And his comment yesterday, well, Jake, the justice of the peace and the magistrates, well, yeah, you're in charge of these guys, and why can't you sort of uh, put your foot down and say, I don't want to see anybody who's in front of you who's been out on bail and committed a crime to be given bail again? Because bail, bail shouldn't be an entitlement. Again, it should be a privilege. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Thank Always you, opinionated. Good to hear from you. Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. 1-833-668-2577. It's Talk Back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. Well, it's not just any Talk Back. It's the Friday Free For All Talk Back. Open line, open topic today. One line available there. It's yours if you want it at one 888 2577, we've been talking about uh, things like the GST holiday and certainly the Canada Post Strike asking if you've been impacted at all by the Canada Post Strike. I mean, here we are, we're 25 days until Christmas Eve. So if you want to weigh in on the Canada Post Strike, I can tell you at least uh, one business that I know of that's been impacted by the Canada Post Strike is a, a weekly newspaper in our part of the country. It's, it's one of Canada's most award winning weekly newspapers. It's called the Eganville leader and a good friend of mine works there. His name is Bruce McIntyre, and he's on the line. How are you? Rob, I got black inky fingers. How are you? <laughs> I've been hearing you. Good. How are you? Day, so, look, I mean, the. the yeah. So, uh, tell us how th- this Canada Post strike is, is hitting a business like yours. I mean, you would mail out probably hundreds, if not thousands, of copies of the paper every week. 
We uh, print about 6,200 papers each week. 4,000 are mailed out. And that is through Can- and that is done through Canada Post to our subscribers, and it's all over Renfrew County and also across Canada and the world. Uh, basically, those people use our online edition, but it is drastically, terribly affecting our our customers, our our, our readers who can read the paper for generations. The problem is Canada Post is our main delivery service, our only delivery service, and it's resulted in um, about four thousand, actually, we about six thousand papers sitting up in our main office at Geekville because. They can't get out the door. So it has really impacted us. And what we have done, with Gerald Tracy, our uh, publisher and editor, said we're on strike. We're still working, but we're on strike. He cannot print any more papers. The simple fact is it costs about five to $7,000 each week to print the papers. And all they're doing is piling up at our office. Now, we have some customers that are coming in to pick up their papers in the Eganville office. But anyone who knows Redford County, for your listeners across the province, across the country, it is the largest geographical county in the province of Ontario, and it is not practical for someone to drive up 80 kilometers to get a paper. So we are stuck between a rock and a hard place. We're trying to improvising. Myself, I've taken a thousand papers down to Renfrew, and the good folks at Renfrew Town Hall have allowed me the main lobby, and we've had people coming in. Our, our subscribers pick up their papers, and I'd say about 80% of those are not from Renfrew, but around the area, the surrounding community within the 50-kilometer radius of the community. And that's who's coming in to get their papers. And they've been told that this is the last issue until Canada Post goes back to work because we're not making any money by printing papers, nothing to sit in our garage. So that's our yeah. dilemma. Yeah. So, I mean, you're losing, <laughs> like you're, you're losing tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars here. Yeah, because of yeah. this Canada Post strike, right? If we were to yeah. continue printing each week, yes, we would be we were using up a lot of trees for no good. So it's uh, yeah. important. Yeah. Yeah. It's just one of the many uh, roadblocks showing up in the last few years. We lost our printer a few years back, and we were able to secure our printing uh, service out of Quebec. But, uh, yeah, it's always one thing after another for the little rural newspapers, and this is just another kick in the shins. Now, so, your your newspaper, you're part of like a weekly community newspapers association, like newspapers like yours, you know, yeah. in small communities all across the country. I would imagine they're probably facing this similar circumstance, Bruce. They are. I spoke to Gerald briefly this morning about that, and he said they're suffering the same um, situation. However, we're different because we are really, there's only three um, papers left in the county. One is in Deep River, which is about 95 kilometers, actually 90, about more than 100 kilometers north of us, and Barry's Bay, again, about 100 kilometers west. So we service the entire county of Renfrew. And we're a little bit different than other uh, community papers because we have such a wide market. Um, right, 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 right. So that, that's our right. issue as well. So you've gone from being a news reporter to a... A newspaper delivery boy again. Well, I, luckily I've been sitting down. A little quick little story. I know you're short for time, but uh, Gerald Tracy, my boss, is the community newspaper. It's been in the family since 1942. And some people came in yesterday and they said, you tell that Mr. Tracy he's doing a great job. I want to thank him. I said, you know what? 60 years ago, little Mr. Tracy was stuffing newspapers for his dad. And look at that guy. He's still there. Look at him. They're stuffing newspapers over there. Look at him go. And he was down. He's oh, <laughs> <you> buddy. <laughs> Well, look, so. look I, you know, I love the Eganville leader. So, look, all the best. I know you've had your challenges. I mean, it's tough enough in the newspaper business as it is, Bruce. But, look, that's a, that's a great uh, great angle of this story. Thanks for raising that. All the best. I hope it resolves itself soon. Thanks again, yeah, Bruce. Will. We'll talk to you Thanks, soon, Bob. buddy. Yeah, bye-bye. Have a great day. Yeah, that's a good friend of mine, Bruce McIntyre. Eganville leader, weekly community newspaper. Just uh, can't get the paper out the door because of the Canada Post strike. Let's go to uh, Jason is in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Hello, Jason. Hi, Jason. Hi, how are you? I'm good, Jason. What's up? Well, I actually called to agree with the fact that this tax break slash money thing that's going on is just going to, I think it's actually going to demolish our economy. It's, it's, we've already suffered enough hits as it is, you know. I think what they should have done was reduce the, the carbon tax, if not get rid of it, because it seems almost like it's been redundant at this point, so... Okay. Okay. I don't so, know what else to say really about it, but that I mean, I think it's kind of like all this money that's going to go out. Like, look what happened with the with the COVID checks. Like, we're still right. paying that off, and you know they're still complaining that they gave out all that money, and now they want to give out you know just as much, if not you know, it's pretty crazy, really, if you think about it. And uh, all the people I've been listening to, I I, I, I kind of side with them because I think I see that yeah, this will be a 
you know, nice for two months. And again, it's only on certain things. So, yeah. you know, the, the big thing that they should have done was either gotten rid of the GST, HST thing altogether or, or get rid of this carbon tax because the carbon tax is actually what's killing us small people. You know, like we're, we're forking out most of our income to rent and gas in the car, which is, you know, you've got to work to pay the bills. So, you know, sure, at the end of the sure. day, this carbon tax is putting up the gas way too high and it's supposed to go up again. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, one's got to go and the other one's got to be mediated to a point where it's not killing everybody. Gotcha. I'm glad you All called right. and shared your opinion today, Jason. Yeah, no I think you have uh, a great weekend. Thanks for yeah, listening. You too. Yeah, anytime. Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. 1 833 668 2577. It's Talk Back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. Friday free for all, so wide open on topics today. 1 2577 to Calgary. Rob. Hello, Rob. Hey, Rob. Um, yeah, regarding the two hundred and fifty dollars, you know, it's, I mean, it's just not fair. Like I said, there's seniors that aren't going to benefit. There's people okay. on welfare that aren't going to benefit. Um, you know, it's like I said, it's just not the right way to do it. What they should have done, I believe, and many people agree, is just reduce the taxes on uh, fuel, uh, both uh, for your home and for for your vehicles, and hopefully that would have a tri- uh, trickle or trickle down effect. Uh, that maybe some other shipping companies might drop uh, their shipping costs a little bit, which would make your groceries a little bit cheaper. Yeah, well, I mean, they're they're saying that it is a temporary tax cut, right? Two months, December fourteenth to February fifteenth. One yeah, of the things, Rob. Rob you use, sorry. Yeah, you show us, you, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to say, you know, which January, February, March is when you use most of your home uh, heating oil. Our fuel, and also that's yeah. when your vehicles burn a little more gas as well. Uh, I won't they keep do. you because yeah. uh, uh, just one other thing on the post office. I mailed um, my mama a small parcel from Calgary to Winnipeg. Cost me twenty five dollars. I mailed it on December fifteenth. It was dicey, but I thought ten days it should get to Winnipeg. It's not that far. It's like eight hundred fifty miles. It took nineteen days to get to Winnipeg. <laughs> I'm an only child. My mom's 88 years old. It was heartbreaking. My mom never got a present. Oh, my God. And that was, that was thanks oh to the, the uh, Canada Post. 19 days, Rob, to go 850 days. miles. I could have put on a pair of snowshoes and got it there quick. Yeah. They must have been delivering uh, I, it by horse horseback, I guess. Or, uh, okay. And sadly, an uh, <laughs> old lame horse, maybe. Um, I talked to FedEx. I talked to Perlator. And I talked to... Um, one of the other companies, UPS or someone, they all told me, again, it's, you know, hearsay, but they all told me yeah. four to five days. Four to five days. Okay. Isn't yeah. that interesting? Okay. Very good. Very good. Thank you Have for your call. Day. Janet. Uh, yeah, you too. Janet is in uh, Nova Scotia. Janet, thanks for calling, Janet. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, Rob. How are you today? Hi. I'm good, Janet. Thanks for calling. What's on your mind? Well, I just wanted to talk about the 250 the government's giving and this cut in the uh, G- GST for a couple of months. Uh, it's all, yeah. uh, uh, it's all, you know, for them to get a scam for them to get keep voters, and all that money they're going to pay out to all these people should be kept in the under the government, and they should put it towards things that hospitals need, schools need, and that's what sure. they should be doing with it, not using it to get people to vote and reelected. Yeah. That's all yeah. I have to say. That's my my beef. So so it's uh, a gimmick, right? Yeah, it's Hope all a ploy. It's a ploy. Government, yes, government absolutely. Tactics. It's all a ploy. Tell people what yeah. they want to hear. I get their vote. Do nothing for them when I when I get in. Most same old every party. Anyway, that's my beef. Uh, okay, good one. Thanks so much. Thank you. Yeah, uh, what I wanted to mention to Rob in Calgary is you know you'd be saying temporary tax cut. Um, I wonder how temporary it's going to be uh, this GST holiday. Look, it's very easy for any government of any stripe to give people things. You know, here's 5% off the GST for a couple of months. Here's uh, 200 bucks. Here's 1% off the sales tax. Here's a, a cut in the gas tax for the next few months. Always easy for governments to sprinkle the goodies around, yeah. at ele- especially at election time. Or if there's even the the threat of an election. A lot easier to do that 
than to say, fix the healthcare system or improve the public education system or reduce crime or solve the opioid crisis or the mental health crisis or the productivity crisis or the climate crisis or whatever crisis we're talking about today. A lot easier to, to give people things than to take things away. Because when you take things away from people, it's harder to win elections. So you hear Mr. Trudeau within the last 20, people need a break. People need a break. People are hurting. He doesn't take ownership for causing any of the pain, but he wants, you know, he's there to help, right? What is he going to be saying on the 16th of February when this GST break disappears? Sorry. Sorry. That's all you get. That's it. That's all. We have no more help to give. And then the carbon tax is going to go up a few weeks later. It's going to go up 18%, $95 a ton April 1st. Yes, the rebates will go up too. But really? Like, is that what's going to happen? I don't know. I don't think I'd be counting on that. Uh, you already hear Mr. Singh. He's already out there saying, I want this to be permanent. I, I want this break on more stuff, and I want it to be forever. Internet bills and cell phone bills and home heating bills. Not gasoline or diesel, though. Not gasoline or diesel. Only bad little boys and girls use gasoline and diesel. If you use gasoline and diesel in your own personal vehicle, you go on Santa's naughty list. It is really, really easy for governments to dole out the goodies. And this is a government that loves to spend, spend, spend. But it's a lot harder to take things away. That's why I wonder, maybe watch this space. I say that from time to time. Watch this space. I wonder just how temporary this temporary relief is going to be. At $1.6 billion a pop. Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. 1-833-668-2577. It's Talk Back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. On a Friday, Sean in Cambridge. Hi there, Sean. Good to hear from you. What's on your mind? Oh, good afternoon. Yeah, I was uh, thinking about the Canada post-strike and how people are talking, maybe forcing them back to work. Well, it seems to me not so long ago we were talking about whether Canada Post was even relevant, how they were losing money, whether we needed Canada Post and all that. Now they're on mm -hmm. strike, and by gosh, aren't they important now? Wow. Well, I think it all depends on uh, the people and their circumstance, where they are. Some people are not impacted at all by a Canada Post strike. Some people, like my friend Bruce, obviously, um, you know, his livelihood is on the line. So it all depends. <laughs> Right. I guess it just shows you have to uh, you have to look at who you're listening to. You just can't listen to broad pronouncements. The people who. Oh, well, I don't. I don't just listen to. I I don't just listen to broad pronouncements. You know, so. I know, but it just shows that who is dominating the news headlines. You really can't depend upon them. <laughs> right. 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 Now, when you hear well, the the possibility not that the government is contemplating this because it doesn't sound like the government is even seriously contemplating this but if the if if canada post workers were to be legislated back or it was sent to the industrial relations board and binding arbitration was issued which would be a, a way to get around a house of commons vote on getting these workers back on the job what would you think of that uh, i th i think it's wrong are we are, mm -hmm. are we a free market economy or are we not is the free market only for the corporations or is it for the workers? You know, yeah, I think uh, I think it's a very valuable point that you raise. The right to strike yeah. uh, is enshrined in the charter. These people have a right to be on strike. They have leverage over their employer. The employer might not like it. It may be inconvenient for Canadians, but that's the bargaining power that the union that the union that's has sort of in order to point. secure. That's uh, totally the whole point. Yeah. It's totally you know, like, the whole point. Yeah. It, should you yeah. only and I'm a right of center guy. I'm not a union. I'm not a union guy. I'm not a union guy, but I can kind of see that. You know. Yeah. So. Like, should you only be allowed to bargain if you're a wealthy corporation? What's as they right. say? What's sauce, sauce for the goose is sauce for the gander. Okay. Suppose Fair that. enough. Fair enough. Yep. Thank you, Sean, for your call today. To Emerson is in Calgary. Hi, Emerson. Good morning, Rob. Uh, thank you for taking my call. It's always so nice to know that every Friday I'm going to have a little treat being able to talk to you, and thank you for that opportunity. <laughs> I wonder welcome. how many Canadians are feeling like I feel right now with Justin Trudeau giving us this little treat 
I wonder how many people just say, you know what, we'll take it, but we're done. Like, we're so done with you, dude. It doesn't matter what you do. <laughs> we are so done. Um, I have to say, I have a big family uh, just outside of Toronto in Woodbridge, Ontario. Um, they're a big fall. They have been a big following of, of Justin Trudeau. Guess what? My 97 year old mother, who still could take me and give me a whipping, she's very strong. She said, There's no way I'm going to vote for that man. I mean, really? just what he's done to our country. And my brother, who was staunch liberal, I thought they'd bury him in a, with a liberal flag. He said himself, <laughs> He goes, You know what? Like, the guy's a con man. And you know what my brother said? He said, listen, I voted for his father because his father was qualified to be a prime minister. I may not have agreed with all his policies, but he was qualified. Right. I have to agree with my brother on that. But this guy is a drama queen. I mean, he's a drama queen. I mean, he thinks every time he opens his mouth, Canadians just bow down to him. Oh, yes, JT. Oh, yes, JT. We're, we're going to reelect you. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. No, don't worry. Uh, you know, Mr. Singh will come along at the end of the day and he'll prop you up again and you'll get another few years. So I just want to know, Rob, do you think that there is that sentiment out there that, you know, thank you very much for the gift. We'll take it, but, but don't bother waiting for our vote like do you feel the way i'm feeling right you now know what i feel you know what i feel I've, i feel like i've seen this movie before look politicians are popular at the beginning very few of them are popular at the end this reminds me of the end of the mulroney years where people couldn't stand the sight of brian mulroney it reminds me of that in ontario I covered ontario politics for a long time i used to have people emailing me every day 25 days until the Liberals are defeated in the election in Ontario. 22 days until the election in Ontario. We say goodbye to the Liberals. It reminds me of that. People just can't wait. They're counting down the days. It's time to talk back. On Now You Know with Rob Snow. Call now. And have your say. 1-833-668-2577. It's the Friday Free For All Talk Back Hour, so we're wide open on topics. Whatever's on your mind, we're good to roll with it. And it is the Friday Free For All, but I have been collecting your thoughts on this GST holiday that passed through the House of Commons yesterday, this two-month break on selected holiday-related items and other essentials. GST break, supposed to start on the 14th of December, expire on the 15th of February, and uh, cost the Treasury... But $1.6 billion, that's the estimate. That's what you will save in GST, all told, $1.6 billion. I mean, you know, what do you think? I have so many questions about it. You know, certainly the liberals and the Democrats, I mean, they, they're out there. And they're talking as though this is going to provide real financial relief for you. Um, do you think that's true, this GST holiday? I mean, I, I guess it's better than nothing. Uh, I like lower taxes as much as the next person, but it's only for two months. And uh, if an item that you would buy during the next two months is not on this list, then I, I guess you're not going to benefit from the savings if you're not in the market for, say, a video game console. Um, I was just doing some quick number crunching on this. Okay, The government says this is going to be a $1.6 billion relief measure for you. GST that won't be collected, $1.6 billion. Now, there are approximately 15 million households in Canada. 15 million households. So 1.6 billion divided by 15 million works out to $106.66. Six. $106.66. That would be the average, I guess, savings per household over this two-month period, $106.66, or about $13 a week. That's your big honking tax cut. But in all honesty, you really can't look at the GST like this because the GST is a consumption tax. One way, and I think the better way to look at this, is actually this is a tax cut for the rich. This is a tax cut for the rich, because the more you make, the more you're probably going to spend, and the bigger your tax cut is going to be. Here's one example for you. Say I take my wife to the Swiss chalet for their festive special. You know, we order a pair of quarter 
chicken meal deals that go, according to Swiss Chalet, go these days for $17.99. Well, I'll save, if I'm in Ontario, I'll save 13%, the HST. So we will save $2.33 on each meal. Okay. (laughs) $4.66 all told. Now, there's a really fancy restaurant in the nation's capital called L'Etelier. And it made news across Canada a couple of years ago because it had a New Year's Eve menu that cost $20,000. It was dinner for four, $20,000. So isn't this awesome? Okay. Me and my wife, we will save $4.66 when we go to Swiss Chalet. But the billionaire tech mogul who lives in Silicon Valley North, who can afford to go to the fancy restaurant uh, and have the $20,000 New Year's Eve feast, will save $3,000 in GST. (laughs) That's a pretty good deal, isn't it? This is why it's hilarious. Jugmeet Singh calls this a, a great win for working people. You know, big tax break for the middle class. He, he calls Pierre Polyev the bootlicker for the billionaires. The man doesn't understand how consumption taxes work. I would say, if anything, this is a tax break for the rich. one 2577 David, I think you have a few more examples of how it's a tax break for the rich. Yeah, well, I was kind of thinking along similar lines earlier today, Rob. You know, the restaurant example is a good example, but also included... In the GST tax cut is catering services. Oh, yeah. Catering uh, services. Which can be very expensive. So I was just doing some research. You know, a high-end catered meal, according to my internet research, for a very fancy event, could go as much as 250 bucks a head. So let's say you're a, a wealthy couple, a couple yeah. of billionaires getting married. Maybe you've got 500 of your wealthy friends coming to the wedding. That's a $125,000 okay. catering bill. Knocking wow. the GST off of that invoice will save the happy couple $6,250. Wow. That's more money okay. than a lot of Canadians will earn between now and Christmas. That's right. Isn't that something? You got another one? Well, um, you're going to need wine, of course, for your oh, wedding. of course. Right? Yes. So um, yes. Yes. at the LCBO right now, here in Ontario, they're selling a... Uh, a Clos d'Abonnet Bru Blanc du Noir Champagne, 2006 vintage. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. okay. Um, I haven't tried it myself. But, yeah, this uh, is the only the sixth release of this wine since okay. 1995. So that's probably why it costs $4,130 a bottle. <laughs> so let's say I grab two of those for my New Year's Eve party. In ordinary, sure. time, in ordinary times, that would be eight thousand. $260 for the champagne. But thanks to the generosity of the Trudeau government, you can now get those two bottles for the low, low basement bargain price of just $7,847. It's $413 in GST you just saved. Thank you, Mr. Trudeau. Cha-ching. Cha-ching. Because Canadians need a break, David. Oh, yes. Canadians yes. need a break. Friday free-for-all. Talk back hour. Let's go to Avery in Calgary. Thanks for waiting there, Avery. You're on the air, sir. Hey, so yeah, I just have a couple things that I was thinking about and talking with people and, you know, uh, with regards to the tax break uh, that most people I know haven't thought of and that, yeah, it's great that it's a break, but I mean, where is that $1.6 million coming from? Are they taxed on the food teeth now or are they taxed on the food teeth after they make up to the $1.6 billion, right? Right. And then in addition to that, the other thing is all of your people who would have been your like frontline workers or whatever, or your like people who work and are affected by this, which would be your grocery store clerk, your uh, grocery store store people have to change their POS systems, have to do quite a bit of extra work. So, I mean, if you're trying to buy both, I don't know that you're going to buy their votes. Yeah, I mean, they'll have to do it, you know, one assumes in the the week leading up to things or, you know, the night before and then two months later, assuming it expires two months later, I'm I'm I doubt that that's going to happen. They're going to have to switch everything back again. Oh, for sure they are. And I mean, I I work in the restaurant industry and I have I'm the one that's responsible for that. And I assume it's going to take me at least five hours just for one restaurant. 
So, I mean, if you're talking about your grocery stores, like a local co-op or something like that, I couldn't imagine how long that's going to take them within their POS system to do each individual item. And with all of the restrictions of this and that and this counts and that doesn't, like... Wow. Wow. So, okay. A lot of, a lot of work ahead for those people. Thank you for your call, Avery. Five hours for one restaurant to change the POS system. That's amazing. I Rob Snow. This is talk back. It's hour number two. It's the Friday free for all. So it's open line, open topic, whatever's on your mind. We're good to roll with it. Just bring up an issue. You want to raise it here. That's what we're here for. 1-833-668-2577. Be right back with more of your calls. something on your mind you want everyone to know call now hello 1-833-668-2577 it's talk back on now you know with rob snow your lines available lots of time to take your call it's the friday free for all talk back hour rob is in calgary what's on your mind today rob well not calgary i'm in cambridge <laughs> in cambridge <laughs> sorry calgary. rob yeah go ahead yeah. yeah um over that, uh, or, you know, it's just baffling with all this money being handed out, like with the GST holiday. I wondered, too, why, you know, why and what it would all cover. But as well with this $250 rebate check, why would it not include people, especially on CPP disability or fixed incomes? They are the ones that really could, even if it won't buy you a year's rent or Something. It would still help a bit with fixed income. And people with CPP on CPP disability, they're not in the same category as people with Ontario disability. Ontario disability, they're on a lower income, but they're covered by Medicare, by the prescriptions, by the province. When you're on CPP disability, there is no coverage. You're on your own, or if you have a spouse that has private insurance, your employer, you're covered, but only so much. And that's, you know, but so even the $200 would even kind of help with that. But it, to buy my vote, no. But, you know, why would I turn away? But, yes, I agree with many other callers. That money could go elsewhere to the hospitals or something. But most times then you got to hire somebody else to manage that, and then that money that's, that's being saved is being spent on wages. So. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, I, as to as to why they're not giving it to the groups that you identified, you know, people who didn't work, people who were on uh, disability stipends, pensioners, this sort of thing. I would say, stay tuned on that. Yeah, absolutely. But right, like they, you know, they, yeah, they, they, they're they, not working. You know, they, they did pay taxes uh, and they did. Sure, to the sure. They, they, you know, but yeah. they separated that yeah. out of the bill. It wasn't part of the bill that passed last night. Yeah, no, no. So I there's obviously going to be mean, some. Ho- it, yeah, if just, I could just finish, sir. I think if I could just there's going to be more distraction over it because now it's going to be soon. It'll be soon swept under the rug and it'll be going on about the tariffs coming in and all this stuff. But I mean, there is mm-hmm. something about it. If you're going to put it up for one, give it to all and make sure. You know, because <laughs> to do that, it already caused a ripple and a division amongst people, which it shouldn't have been. Not only bad, but I mean, working people deserve it too. But I mean, so do people on CPP disability. Yes, yes, yes. Well, as I say, government. as I say, and I thank you for your call, uh, Rob in Cambridge. I would say stay tuned. I believe there's going to be a lot of horse trading going on between now and the time the the House rises, which is scheduled to be on the. 17th of December. They'll be back in late January. There's supposed to be a spring budget that could very well decide the fate of this government. So, as I say, stay tuned. Now, why was it crafted more toward what I would call the middle class? Because they're desperate for the middle class, specifically the suburban, urban and suburban voters in the in the big cities who are really feeling a cost of living crunch as well it's not just people on the margins it is people you know it's it's incredible for me to even say this but it is people earning you know six figures or feeling the pinch of things i've taken the calls and we see this you know the support for these parties has just been being being cratering with those cohorts let's go to eric in calgary eric you're up next eric go ahead eric yeah, hi. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the GST and put some yes. context around uh, the little guy. 
Yeah. I live in Alberta, and, of course, the GST is the only tax we pay here, uh, 5%. So every dollar I spend, I save, I will save five cents on each dollar. If I buy right. a bag of peanuts for five bucks, I save 25 cents. If I buy a hundred dollars of groceries, I save five bucks. If I've got the wherewithal and I'm able to spend a thousand dollars, I save 50 bucks. Big deal. Right. You know, even if I am destitute or poor, I'm probably not going to spend a thousand dollars. So maybe somewhere between five and fifty dollars is about what the the most a little guy will get. So I do agree that it's a, a rich man's uh, benefit, and I don't think it's helping uh, the smaller person or the, the the less fortunate person. I don't think it's helping them very much at all because right. you know, you're going to have to give right. me a lot more than fifty bucks to help me out. I mean, you know, they're they're portraying this as some great win for the working class. When really it's a great win for the wealthy, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. This is yeah, a tax yeah, cut for the rich. Yeah. Yeah. I use You're this example right. of go- I use this example of going to Swiss Chalet. Okay, I take my wife to Swiss Chalet. We're gonna save less than five bucks on a couple of meals at Swiss Chalet. You know, compare that to somebody who goes to a five star restaurant and orders a five course meal what are they going what what are they going to save after they have their their drinks and everything else a lot more than the four dollars and 66 cents i'm going to save on a couple of festive specials at swiss chalet i think it's a very good point that you raise eric and i think it's been lost in much of the discussion through all of this have something on your mind you want everyone to know call now hello 1-833-668-2577 it's talk back on now you know with rob snow bill in calgary you're on the friday free for all talk back what's on your mind today bill well, other than the stupid drivers on the road quite a bit rob um how are you doing <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Keep your weather um, there, so, though. Don't send it here. That's all I gotta say. Bob, I just, okay. I just landed. I just landed from Toronto. I got it just in time. Anyway, um, you know, Rob, I uh, I think that uh, the next federal party that comes up and proposes uh, uh, term limits has got my vote. I don't care what color or stripe they are. It's time to bring mm. term limits in. You know, to have a prime minister that's pulling this kind of shenanigans. And you know, this GST cut. Costing us what? One point three billion on the first round, and then there's another what? Four and a half billion for the two hundred and fifty dollars checks that he wants to give out. And you know how many keels have we laid on frigates in the last fifteen years, Rob? Not a one. On the twelve new frigates or sixteen new frigates we're supposed to have, you know yeah. we. Uh, it, it's it's just a running joke. You know I, I make a very good living, Rob. I you know I don't have a mortgage anymore, so you know I, I I'm pretty comfortable. My wife and I, I don't have any kids. Um, you know, so Pampers and Pavlum don't really mean anything to me. I don't eat candy because I like my teeth. So, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I might buy a Christmas tree. That's about it. But, yeah. I, I, you know, my wife and I will go out with a couple of our friends. We do this every year. We go out for sushi to one of the better sushi bars here in Calgary. And we'll drop six, seven, eight hundred bucks. But, yeah. you know, so the GST's off that meal, Rob. And, you know, and, and I know that's a pretty expensive meal for a lot of people. But that's a whopping 40 bucks. You know, I'm just going to put it back in a tip for the waiter or waitress. Uh, it's not, it doesn't mean anything to me. And I don't think at the end of the day that people, you know, I, first off, I don't think the government should be promoting people going out and buying chips and, and candy and, you know, basically booze and you. booze. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, booze is, uh, well, we all got to have our weaknesses, right? But, uh, the, uh, and besides that, you know, the booze is beer and wine. I, I drink scotch. <laughs> so it doesn't help you, okay. right? But All I just, right. I just think it's just a joke, Rob. And you know, it's a, it's an, it's an insult to the Canadian taxpayer. Um, okay. You know, and I, and I think that uh, if they really wanted to help, they would have taken a, you know, just knocked the GST off of, uh, off your telecommunications, your heating, you know, off of fuel, you know, because when you buy a liter of gas, you're getting tax on tax on tax on tax, right? Um, so those are my points, Rob. One other point I wanted to make is. Uh, you know, I run a software company. It's a national company. We do point of sale. Um, we have customers from coast to coast to coast. And this is a nightmare for them. You know, if you're a co-op or Safeway or Petro Canada, it's not a big deal because they can download from a head office server to their individual okay. franchisees and sites. But if you're an independent uh, 
uh, re- realtor. This is 15, 17 hours worth of work to go through your database. Oh, my gosh. Inside your point of sale system. Oh, yeah. That's to change it and then to change it back. So, you know, you might have brought in a whole bunch of new people that are buying a bunch of candy and whatever. There's GST out. But you've lost it all on labor. So it really hasn't done much for you. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, okay. Thank you for your what, insight. To... Thank Not you, Bill. Problem, Bye-bye. Thank have you. a great weekend. Bye-bye. Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. 1-833-668-2577. It's Talk Back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. And down the stretch we come for the Friday free-for-all talk back. Two lines available. One of them is yours, one 866 2577 Until then, Joe in Waterloo is on the line. Hello, Joe. Hey, Rob. How you doing? Hello, Joe. I'm good, Joe. Thanks. Uh, what's on your mind today? Well, I just uh, want to chime in on the, on the tax rebate uh, thing. I mean, you mentioned earlier about some people making six figures feeling the pinch. I can vouch for that because I'm in that category and people, there's pros and cons to it. And people are going to say, everyone's got an opinion and people are going to say whatever they think about it. Uh, I mean, I'm going to appreciate an extra 250 bucks when it comes my way. Yeah. Okay. It's all borrowed money. You realize that government is heavily in debt, running a massive deficit. Right? Yeah, well, that's nothing new. I mean... Nothing new. I don't know. Okay. Who, who's going to fix okay. that? Uh, like, another, way to, another way, I guess another way to think about this would be it's going to cost... The way it's designed now, it's probably going to be expanded and it will cost even more, but the way it's designed now will be $4.3 billion. The argument could be made you could do a, a lot of good in Canada with $4.3 billion. You know, you could... Hire some nurses, hire some doctors, hire some teachers. You could improve whatever. Take your pick, you know, v- veterans benefits, seniors benefits, help with mental health care, help the homeless, people living in tents, you know, all this kind of stuff, right? What do you say to that? Well, they're all great points for sure. Uh, but I don't know, like uh, over the last five years, there's been a lot of people leaving the healthcare industry. Are there even any nurses to hire? Well, yeah, maybe if you dangled four point three billion dollars out there, you might be able to find a few nurses. I think you could hire in Waterloo. Yeah, right? Perhaps I, yeah. uh, I'm not really familiar with the industry myself and what, like the labor market on it, but I mean, who knows? Right, right. But you say you could use the two hundred fifty bucks for right? sure. I could use an extra bump here and there for sure. Okay. All right. Understand that. Appreciate that. How long do you think it'll last you? 250 bucks. Who knows? A week? A week? Mm-hmm. Three days? Yeah, three couple days. A couple of tanks maybe. of Who gas? Knows? Weeks worth of groceries, couple tanks, maybe? A couple of tanks of gas. Yeah, you're not getting much at the grocery store, but yeah, a couple of tanks of gas. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. You're in the minority opinion today. And uh, in the minority opinion this week, because a lot of people think it's nothing but a vote buying scam, Joe. I think he's gone. Okay, a, a fief is in Waterloo. A fief, you're on the air. A fief, what's your opinion? Hey, um, I'm actually going to talk about you know, the GST. Now, yeah, the, the GST. GST how long sure. is that for? Uh, same deal. Two months. Two months. Now yeah. the thing is, what I'm worried is. Even though can like the government will decrease like get rid of the GST, but mm-hmm. what about like the companies? They will increase the prices again. So just to make sure that oh hey they get their money back for the GST part. Yeah, maybe maybe I you know I'm not sure if they're gonna are they gonna lower their prices by seven percent or where there's the harmonized sales tax like in Ontario where you are thirteen percent. Yeah, exactly. Or will the prices move at all? I, I, you know, th- this I don't know. This I don't know. That that that, yeah. that one's like worried me a lot. And also, only for like two months, it should be like forever, basically. Like because the inflation keeps on like, like inflation hurts us so much. So why not just keep this off of that? Yeah, well, maybe forever. Maybe on some essentials, uh, you know, prepared yeah. meals. A lot of people buy prepared meals at the grocery store. Diapers. You get no argument for me on 
not having yeah. GST on diapers, home heating yeah, fuel, like, sure. Uh, yeah. Cell phone bills, I, you know, I don't know. Internet bills, maybe. Can you live without the internet these days? It's hard to do. Uh, you know, truly essential items on, yeah, um, you know, on you know, I, whatever, you know, pudding, uh, you know, cheese plates, beer, mm -hmm. uh, you know, these are not essential items. So I, I don't yeah, really think, you know, also gaming consoles, that makes a lot of sense. Like, <laughs> gaming consoles. Yeah. Gaming consoles. Right. I don't know why yeah. they're doing that. Like, like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not down with, you know, taking the GST off of. All a lot of the stuff that's on this list. Exactly. But thank you for yeah. everything, man. Have a good day. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Anytime, anytime. John is in Calgary. John, you're on the Friday Free For All Talkback. What do you want to talk about? Well, yes, I was uh, talking to your young lady there, and she said uh, good idea for the uh, GST to be taken off of carbon tax. Wouldn't that be a big uh, bonus? Well, yeah, I mean, you don't want it. Well, it would be because you're getting taxed on tax. And certainly that's a money gushing machine for the government. The government's bringing in hundreds of millions of dollars, not just you know, it was bringing in billions of dollars on the carbon tax, but it's bringing in hundreds of millions of dollars on the GST on the carbon tax. So you'll get no argument for me. I mean, I'm more supportive of just getting rid of the carbon tax. It'd be a start, maybe. And, by so. the way, did anybody or any of the media have a face-to-face uh, -face with Freeland or Trudeau and ask them the questions that your your uh, listeners are asking about the uh, consideration of the cost for industry or for the uh, merchants to implement the, their point-of-sales uh systems to manage this well i don't know mr trudeau was in prince edward island today doing a, a thing about this school lunch program so i'm not sure what questions he took from the news media because it would probably if it was in prince edward island it would only be the local pei news media that would be there probably a small contingent of of news media uh, now, Christy Freeland was in Toronto today doing a news conference. Lots of news reporters, of course, in Toronto. She was making a big announcement about the Toronto Transit Commission making some investments there. I think, uh, David, that was a $750, $750 million announcement. Uh, the Liberals, when in doubt, spend more money in Toronto, <laughs> Fortress Toronto. Let's try to shore up Fortress Toronto. I mean, they need new rail infrastructure for the TTC, some of the rail cars and whatnot are 30 years old so that that's what that announcement was about but i i wasn't i was doing my own show so i wasn't paying attention to what christian freeland was was asked david she was putting a as usual a pretty rosy spin though on the economy right dave oh yeah that was the first thing she said look we've got great news on the economy the gdp right. of the country has grown by a fraction of a percent we should all feel great about that well, it was here, the, yeah, it was uh, a quarterly number, if I'm not mistaken, for GDP, right? Yeah. 0.3%. Yeah. But again, the same report found GDP per capita, per Canadian, Yeah, on the yeah. decline. So the GDP is growing, but not as well, fast as the population. Well, not just that, on the decline for six straight quarters. Yeah, yeah. Right? So 0 0.3 times, you know, four quarters out of the year, you know, so you annualized our economy is growing at, what, 1.2%? Yep. Annualized? Yep. Right? It's a vibe session, Rob. It's a vibe session. It's a session. vibe session, Dave. Yeah, that's right. It's a vibe session. And if the economy is doing so well, why do you have to send people $250? Why do you have to give them this morsel of a tax cut at all? Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. 1-833-668-2577. It's Talk Back on Now You Know with Rob Snow. Gloria is on the Friday Free For All Talk Back. What's on your mind today, Gloria? Well, I just wanted to chime in and add to the sentiment that I think it's a big, huge, fat waste of money to put okay. $250 in, in in the majority of people's pockets, but not everybody. But even so, 
the what that totals, like you're saying, four point five billion dollars. Good grief! Put that to some good use. Doing something, whether it's like you say, the hospitals or the school system or something, and that's a huge amount of money that could really do some good somewhere else. Two hundred and fifty dollars is not going to make a whole lot of difference to any individual, no matter who you are. It's only two hundred and fifty dollars doesn't go very far today. Doesn't go very far. No, it doesn't go very far. Why do you think they're doing it? (laughs) It, they say well, they just it, want to give it, you. A, they want to give you a helping hand. You know, times are tough, and and times are tough, that's right? BS. That's Hugo BS. is a big liar, and he's right. just he's insulting us by thinking he can fool us into thinking mm. he's the good guy. He's not the good guy. Ah, it's just it's disgusting to the ultimate max. I just. I can't. Max. Uh, I just All can't right. understand that if anybody is fooled by this, uh, they've got to get their head checked. All right. Thank you, Gloria, for unloading there. Let's go to Daryl. You're on the air, Daryl. What's on uh, your Hi. mind today on this Friday? Go ahead. Hi. Uh, first, I, I, Gloria, good comment. I like her. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to play devil's advocate on this um, uh, GST uh, holiday. By all means. Go ahead. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm a third-generation old white guy, um, so I'm Christian. So, hey, you know, it's Christmas. It's great. I'm, I'm going to get a sure. break on Christmas trees and all kinds of goodies and whatnot. But just out of curiosity, if you're a Muslim, a Hindi, or many more other ethnic groups that don't celebrate Christmas, isn't this kind of prejudicial? and discriminatory on the part of the federal government? Well, I, guess, I suppose that's a, you know, I was kind of thinking that this morning, you know, a lot of these things are Christmas related, right? Well, you, you, know, exactly. you know, you know, you know, and, and, you, know, and you look at the diversity of the country right now, uh, there are lots of people not, don't celebrate Christmas. They're not putting up Christmas trees. They're, 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 you know, they're not doing Christmas shopping or anything, you know, no. they're they don't going to Christmas parties or things like this. And, I don't know. Well, that, that's my whole point. I mean, once sure. upon a time. A, no, I think it's a valid but, point. Sure, uh, I think it's a valid point, yeah. And I guess the other thing that, that I, I find a little bit disheartening is that uh, uh, Mr. Trudeau is giving a 5% uh, GST cut to most of the country. But if you happen to live in Ontario or Nova Scotia, you get all of your HST back, 13%. Yeah. Yes. How how, yes. how fair is that? How, how do you square well, that? I don't know. Maybe maybe Alberta should start having a provincial sales tax. How you know? How would you feel about that? Oh heaven! How do you it. think? How do you think we feel <laughs> in the rest of the country? I'm in Quebec where we're paying fifteen percent uh, all yeah. year round, right? Well, I, and I guess you don't think we're that, you don't think we're not jealous of Alberta where you you, you know you're you're whining and complaining sure. all the you're whining and complaining all <laughs> the time and there you and there you are you're not even charging a sales tax for crying there you out. go well there's hidden taxes that make up for that we all know that <laughs> okay. yeah. all right and, and no the, no the other no. thing is that Doug, Doug yeah. Ford I mean I could just imagine uh, Trudeau calling Ford say hey Dougie by the way you know that. Uh, you're kind of the harmonized sales tax. Um, you're not getting it. We're taking that revenue and we've given it away. How does he feel about that? I wonder. Okay, you you kind of you kind of lost me there with that comment, Daryl. And I I'm tight on time, and I got a couple of more calls to get to before we call it quits uh, here on now. You know for today. Uh, so let's stop, and then we'll. Uh, I know what on uh, find out what on, what is on Linda's mind, Dawn as well. Just hang on the line if you're if you're on the line, you're on the air before the top of the hour here on Talkback on News Radio. Have something on your mind you want everyone to know? Call now. Hello. One eight three three six six eight twenty five seventy seven. It's Talkback on Now You Know with Rob Snow. Okay, we have some calls to get to. Not a lot of time. So let's get to Linda. Linda, you're on the air. What's on your mind today, Linda, here on Friday? Uh, and in regards to the GST rebate, yes. why not yes. make the government do it? You know, people submit for GST rebate all the time. So why not? You pay it up front, you send it in, and Trudeau has to rebate to you instead of all these businesses having to change over for two months. And then okay. we would see okay. 
who is actually getting the benefit. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting uh, suggestion. Yeah. Not yeah, something I that think, I had. You know, uh, they're saying, well, businesses have to change it and only for two months. Yes. So yeah. if the GST is already set up for a rebate system anyway, right. why not okay. make the government do it? Right, right, right. Okay, that's very interesting because I've been quite struck by uh, the labor that's going to go into this. Well, we yeah, one, and not uh, only that, yeah. yeah. But not only that, one person call uh, who runs a restaurant and is in charge, one restaurant is in charge of the point of sale system, says so it's going to take five hours to do. And another person uh, has a software company involved in point of sale systems. Uh, said for an independent retailer with a number of items, 15, 16 hours of work ahead, like two days yeah. of work to get ready for this. Right. So, well, so yeah. And so then if those guys who are buying their very expensive wine want to rebate, let them set their <laughs> yeah, building. Sure enough. Sure enough. Yeah, fair enough. See, that's, okay. That's Interesting my point. thought anyway. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Valid point. Thank you, Linda. I believe uh, Dawn is going to be the last call of the week. And when we return on Monday, it will be December. Oh, my goodness gracious. It will be December. Dawn, what's on your mind? Hi there. Uh, Hi, Dawn. happy to be the last caller of the month. So the GST <laughs> thing, first, I just want to let you know that uh, I I am an elected person in my in my field, and I'm a triple-digit earner. And what I can say is all the people uh, in my industry, $250 is easy come, easy go money for them. They're not even going to know it. Uh, most okay. of them have their EI and CPP paid off by, you know, May, June of the year and start seeing bigger paychecks. So they might appreciate it in January when their checks are a little smaller. But absolutely, this is a political stunt. And uh, the Liberal government is probably three steps ahead of what we're all thinking about right now. And it's going to come down the road when we realize the scams and, and the friends and family of the Liberal Party that were all involved where all the real money was to be made. And it's like that old cartoon where he's handing you a five and he's pulling a 20 out of your back pocket. It's one of I think it's like... The, it's a political stunt, which, but really they're, they're behind the scenes. They're using our money to give back our money. And in the meantime, they're administrating all of these funds through the friends and family program. And it's all going to come out just like all of the other scams that we've seen over the years that they've never been held accountable for that are still under investigation. And it's just more of the same with the same government. Okay. All right, Don. Last call of the month, as you point out. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks for all your calls uh, all this week. Really great discussion on uh, on a number of topics. So many of them, though, having to do with uh, the cost of living, which uh, in my assessment remains the top issue in the country and uh, certainly explains the current popularity of the current government and desperate measures like this. Enjoy your weekend. As I said, we're back on Monday. Brand new topics and more of your calls during Talk Back. Now you know, I'm Rob Snow. This is News Radio.